Hey everyone, welcome to a Godot C Sharp tutorial. We're going to be covering a simple input manager that you can use in your project. Um, this input manager will allow you to rebind keys, it'll allow you to integrate easily with an options menu, and it also makes saving and loading keybinds very easy. Um, for the sake of brevity, this input manager is focused on keyboard events, but you can easily extend it to work with mouse events or other controller events or something like that. There is a GitHub repo link in the description, so feel free to go ahead and clone or download that repository and open up the code and follow along. So before I get into the code overview, I'm going to show you what you're getting. So here we have um, some labels here which indicates what action we are rebinding. We have line edits which are defaulted to the current keybind value. And then we have reset buttons which will reset to the default values. So if I click on this space line edit, this jump line edit here, and I press Q, that's going to update the jump keybind with that Q um, key. And then same with attack, if I press I, it's going to do the same thing. And then if I click reset on jump, it's going to go back to space and attack will go back to V. Okay, let's go and take a look at the code. So we have a static input helper class. Static is just because, so we can access it anywhere. We don't need to instantiate it. And it doesn't have a namespace. Um, that's also for ease of use. It's in the global namespace, so all you have to do is just say input helper dot whatever from wherever in the code, and it's going to be fine. Okay, so the first thing is we are declaring our actions that we're interested in with strings. So these actions are if we go to our project properties, project settings rather, we have all these UI events and then we have our jump and attack event. So these strings here correspond to the actions that we're interested in. And then we're also storing the actions that we're interested in inside of a string. And we'll see why we do that later. Then we declare a dictionary of string and a list of input events that's called default keybinds, which we init in the constructor here. So our static constructor, our input helper constructor here, we call init default keybinds. If I go ahead and go to that. Okay, so here what we're doing is we are iterating over each action string in our actions array. So we have these constant values in there, and then we, which correspond to jump and attack. So we're iterating over jump and attack strings. Then we're calling input map get action list. So this is a Godot method. So if I go in here, you can see that it's a Godot method. This returns a list of objects which correspond to input events. So what we have to do is we have to select X as input event. And this is just a link query. If you're not familiar with link, I highly recommend checking it out. It's very, very useful. So we're just casting each element in that object array as an input event, and then we are um, transforming it into a list. And then our default key binds, the key is going to be our string action, so either jump or attack, and then we're going to make the list the list of input events. Okay, so that's our default key binds. And then we have a method here called erase action events. And what this is going to do is this is going to go back to the Godot input map and get the action list. We're going to iterate over each object. So remember, this comes back as an object array from Godot. For each object in actions, we're going to cast that as an input event. And then we're going to go back to the input map and we're going to say, if our input map has our action key. Now this key is actually it's going to either be jump or attack. It's not a keyboard key, it's like a, a key in a hash map, basically. So if our input map has that jump or attack action, we're going to erase the associated event. So here, we're iterating over each event that comes back from the action list, and we are erasing it. That's all this method is doing. Okay? So we have another static method here called get key text. What this is going to do is this is going to take an input event key, so this is a keyboard event, and we are going to return OS get scan code string, and this um, method takes a scan code, which we can get from the input event key. I'm actually doing a redundant cast here. Um, that's actually not 
not necessary, but I must have overlooked that when I was refactoring everything. So you can just put EV in here like that and it'll work just fine. Okay. So we have a method here called get first event key text. So the reason I created this is to reduce the complexity of multiple actions, multiple events in an action. So for example, we could have a jump event that is bound to several different keys. Uh, you don't typically see that in games and for the game that I'm making, I don't need that functionality. So I just have this get first event key text. And what this is gonna do is this is going to again, get the action list here from Godot for the key, which is gonna be jump or attack. We're gonna get the first action and then we're gonna return get key text. So that's the one that I just went over up here. And otherwise we're gonna return string.empty. So that's all that's doing is it's just getting the string representation of the first event in an action. This next static method is useful for serializing and deserializing data. So turning data into a string and reading it back out of the string, uh, mostly just for getting it ready for serialization. So in order to get it into a format that's um, friendly to store, we uh, first of all declare a new dictionary, which is a list, a string and a list of int. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna say for either jump or attack, so that could be one of the keys, we are storing a list of scan codes. Now a scan code is just an integer, so we're just storing a list of integers. And what we're doing is we're iterating over our actions yet again. So if you remember, actions is this array of things that, of actions that we're interested in. And what we're doing is we are getting the action list. So again, this is a Godot method that returns an array of objects. We're going to select all of the um, events for that action where the event is an input event key. So this is gonna throw out all keyboard events, um, controller events, things like that. Actually, controller events might be wrapped up in here. I'm not entirely sure on that, but it will get rid of mouse events. And we're going to select it. We're gonna select the scan code rather. So we're gonna cast it to an input event key and get the scan code and then return it to a list. So all that's doing is that's getting this portion. This is getting that list of scan codes, that list of integers. And then all we're doing is we're adding that to our dictionary, our action key and our scan codes list that we've just created. And then similar down here, we have set action scan codes. This just goes the other way. So this will take a dictionary of strings, keys, and list integer values. And what we're doing actually is we are iterating over the keys in the dictionary. We're going to erase the action events. So whatever events are there by default, we're getting rid of them. So we're getting rid of the default jump event and we're getting rid of the default attack event. And then what we're doing is we're getting the scan codes from that key. So we're getting this scan codes associated with jump, we're getting the scan codes associated with attack. And then for each scan code in scan codes, we're going to create an event that corresponds to that scan code. So that's the interesting thing about the Godot input map is that you actually have to add an input event to the map, okay? So what we do is we just say, we create a new input event key, then we set that key events scan code to the scan code that we're currently iterating on. And then this is a Godot method, input map add action event. We're taking our key, which is either attack or jump, and then our key event, which we've just created with the appropriate scan code. So what that's gonna do is that's going to set all of the action events to whatever is contained in this dictionary. So you can see how you can use this for serialization and deserialization. You can get a dictionary, so that way you can save it. And then when you load it, you can set the action scan codes with the same structure dictionary, okay? And then we have another static method down here that is get default input event. Now what this is gonna do is this is going to say, okay, if we have an entry, rather if we have events for the action that we're trying to um, get the default input event for. Um, we are going to return that, the first one. Now this is the same deal as before. We're only returning the first event just for simplicity's sake. You can definitely extend this to return all events, uh, but again, it's just to be simple. 
We're going to return that as an input event. Um, otherwise, we're going to return null, and that's fine. Okay, so that's an overview of the input helper. Let's see how we actually use it in the scene. So I have a keybind input class here that extends this hbox container, and I'll show you that scene. Here's my keybind input scene. So it's got a parent hbox container. It's got a label, a line edit, and a reset button. And that's just that. And then in our main scene, we have two instances of that scene. So you can extend this however you want. You can have as many keybinds as you want. All you got to do is just keep reinstancing that scene for however many rebindable keys you have. OK, and if we look at this, so we're declaring we have the export, which is our label text. OK, so if I go back to my main, our label text, for example, is attack or jump. And then we are exporting a value that's our input map key. So this is going to be the same deal, except it has to match the input map. So we have jump and attack in here in our input map. And then our input map key, for example, will be attack or it will be jump over here. Okay, so we're getting, and then we declare these private label, private line edit, private button. Those are our three components. We're getting those things just that so we have a reference to them. We're setting our line edit node text to our get first event key text of our input helper. So recall how I said that this has no namespace and it's static. So all we have to do is just say input helper, get first event key text, input map key. And this is either our attack or jump key, and that will return our default values, which in this case happen to be space and V. And then we're setting the label node text to whatever we've set our label text to. Um, you could do this just by editing the label node itself, but um, you'd have to enable editable children for that. Uh, but it's however you want to do it. And then we're connecting to the GUI input signal of the line edit node and we're connecting it to this method called onGUIInput. And then our reset button node, we're connecting to the pressed signal, and we're connecting to onResetButtonPressed, okay? So let's take a look at onGUIInput. This happens when you press a key, or move the mouse, or anything really. And we're checking here if our event is our input event key, E. So I actually want to spend a little bit of time talking about this saying ev is input event key e it'll try to do the cast it'll try to do the comparison rather to say is this an instance of an input event key if so it will store that in the e variable so you can all do that in one line and now all i have to do is say input helper erase action events so you remember this so we're erasing the events that are currently associated with that action so either jump or attack then we're adding an action, we're adding an event to our input map. So this is a Godot um, API here. Input map add action event with our key, which is either attack or jump, and then our event. So the event that we've just pressed and received in our on GUI input, we're adding that as our action our, as our input map event. And then we change the line edit node text to be um, get key text. So we've seen this before. This will return the string um, that references the scan code associated with the event. And then we're saying accept event. So this event will no longer bubble up through the tree when we say accept event. So this will be um, consumed by the line edit. And then on reset button pressed, we are going to erase the current action events. And then for, for the key, so for attack or for jump. And then we are going to get the default input event. So if you recall, we are going to our default keybinds map, which we've initialized on game start um, with init default keybinds here. And this is just going to return that input event that's associated with the attack or jump key. And then we're going back to the Godot API. We're saying input map add action event with our key, with our event, and then we're again changing the line edit node to that get key text. So I'll show you once again, now that you have that all in your mind, I'll show you once again what is going on here. So we have our default key binds that have been set here, okay? And I'm going to focus on a line edit and then press a key 
and that's going to set everything up all nice and I don't really have a demonstration for the input event map getting changed other than the text changes to the value of the input map event. So we know that it works from that. And then our attack is P, whatever, and then we have our reset, which goes out to the default keybinds, which we've configured on startup, and it's back to what it started with. Okay, um, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Again, there is a repository link in the description below. So feel free to go ahead and grab that code, mess around with it, try to integrate it into your project. I hope that tutorial helped. I would really appreciate it if you guys could check out Tenacious, which is a game that I made with Godot using C Sharp. The Steam store page link is in the description below. And thank you for checking that out. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.